I'll show you all this first. How are you tonight? I'd like to thank Cindy and the partnership for hosting. <clears throat> also, I'd like to thank the library, Julie. Nice job as always. Thank you. Uh, we made these when we revamped the farmhouse. Uh, they were black. We gave them out to everyone that had a part in the renovations of the farmhouse. Um, after the fact, I had a case made for dignitaries when they visited the farm. So uh, anyone that's not a trustee in the room, uh, if you could answer a couple questions for me, simply raise your hand and I'll call on you. I'll give you one of these. <laughs> so to, for starters, I'm gonna break Cindy's rules. She said no question and answer, so it'll be fast. I'm thir third speaker in, we're already off the rails. Uh, what's old? The trustees of the Newcastle Commons or the United States? Raise your hand. You don't count and you don't. <laughs> yes, ma'am, you. I'm gonna go with trustees. Very good, <clears throat> very good. From a warrant by William Penn in 1701 to 1764, our original incorporation, uh, that founded the trust. And uh, I'll give anyone the extra, extra credit. Uh, how far back can the, the common lands, I'm talking about the common lands, little hint here, Dutch law, okay? How far back can we go? How far back does the trust, go ahead, Mr. Mayor, smart Alec. <laughs> no, well, let's let's see, up. no, go ahead. Ellie, Ellie. Go ahead, hang on, I, I just, before you say it, we could answer. <laughs> Go ahead, Alec. You're close. You're close. Anyone? I'd like you to raise your hand, Mr. Uh, Council President. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ellie, you got it. 1650. Yeah. 1650. Under Dutch law, we can trace our roots. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, now the part I have to read, I'll show you our blue book. We pretty much live by the blue book. You'll see the three dates on here. 1701, that goes back to William Penn. Uh, basically just having the 1,068 acres surveyed, 1764. That was when we wrote the provincial governors, two of William Penn's sons. Uh, they were the governors of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and we incorporated for the first time. Then later in 1792, after Delaware was actually a state, we reincorporated and we got a name change. Woo! -hoo! We went from trustees of Newcastle Commons to trustees of the Newcastle oh. Commons. <laughs> <laughs> big change. Thank you, big government. Uh, let me see. Uh, handled that. Handled that. Uh, I would like to focus on. I would think residents. Um, the trust is not an entitlement. We are a private 501c3 corporation. Uh, this isn't like the Alaskan oil wealth disbursement where we send you 3,000 bucks a year just for being an Alaskan resident. It's not J.G. Wentworth. It's not your money and you don't need it now. Uh, some historical points I'd like to pass on. I don't wanna give you this date we did this and this date we did that, but Delaware had three signers of the Declaration of Independence. Two of them were trustees, uh, ratifiers of the Constitution, signers of the Constitution, also trustees. Um, so I would say, did you, here's your benefit. Uh, did you play baseball at Newcastle Little League, baseball or softball? Did you ever enjoy basketball or tennis? You might have gotten some benefits. Uh, were you or your children? able to take advantage of the scholarship program? Do you like the events that the Newcastle Historical Society puts on, helped in a small part by a trust grant, or events aided by the community partnership, or Arasafa's decorations at Christmas, or community tree planting, uh, city events like the Art on the Green, a day in Old Newcastle, Separation Day, concerts in the park, uh, Mozart's plain air uh, art competition, did I say that right, Dennis? Just about. <laughs> Very good. We also uh, help nonprofits beyond the Little League. We help Friends of Belanca, Goodwill Fire Company, Newcastle Public Library, Newcastle Senior Center, the list goes on. Uh, the trust owns the old library, the building that we're standing in, the new library, the expansion of the library. 
own town hall. Uh, the building that we occupy, Penn Farm number six, and about 65 acres there. Um, with those 600, we, we have 650 acres altogether of the original 1068. The land that um, the Newcastle County Airport sits on was taken as a result of eminent domain. Mm. So that's about the only land and the land that William Penn School sits on, <clears throat> the only land that's ever been taken out of the original 1068. Of the remaining 650 acres, we have some great things where we're conserving nature, like the Hermitage, and then we have other things that generate revenue for us. Uh, after Belanca, you'd start at Amazon, moving out 273. Amazon pays, you know, through a broker, we, we receive rents. Um, Verizon, Gregory Automotive, the Farmer's Market, all the way from the Farmer's Market, all the way over to the IHOP, and everything in between is trust property. That's where we get some of our revenue. Moving down the DuPont Highway, um, Aunt Berta's. You might have seen Aunt Berta's open. The Dunkin' Donuts, the former Tremont Motel, Glacier Auto, Penmark Shopping Center. Sounds good. I'm going to go past it, Matt. I apologize. I'm not done with our land yet. Uh, the Air Base Carpet Mart. Go across the road. You've got the Burger King and the car rental place up to the Korean Church. The Korean Church, the Milex, there's a little former communications booth. Uh, and with that, about $1.8 million, we give back 99% between maintenance of all of our properties and all the grants that I kind of ran through quickly. That's all I got. Thanks so much.